we're going to have a series of three lecture videos that will be looking at strabismus and we will start from looking at uh, how the eye works especially with the with the issue of extraocular muscles and the binocular visions and all that then we are going to look at the different classifications of strabismus and then finally we look at um, the management okay so we'll start off with looking at first of all what is strabismus i'm sure most of you some of you have actually had a scenario where you have somebody who is looking straight at you as if actually they're looking at you but apparently they are not looking at you they are looking at something else or something uh, next to you so strabismus is an interesting um, uh, eye disease and uh, it refers to a state where the eyes are unable to align properly under normal condition um, and then ends up with a scenario I've just explained, where instead of actually looking at that item that they are fo that they are supposed to be looking at, they they look like they are focusing on you. So um, this um, occurs. So normally, you both eyes will end up not looking at the same place at the same time. But ideally, in a normal uh, person, you will have both eyes looking at the same person at the same time, and when you move then it moves with you. So that is ideally how it works. But with strabismus, uh, you'll have that the eyes are unable to align properly under normal condition. And as a result, you end up having ocular misalignment due to extraocular uh, muscle imbalance. That is normally the main reason. So it is commonly referred to as cross-eyed, uh, wandering eyes or squint. I'm sure you must be having other names um, in your locality. So to look at now the main area that is normally affected, the extraocular muscles, we'll um, uh, describe its characteristic. And we know that it's made up, we have four erectus uh, muscles and two oblique muscles. And those muscles are here. So we have the lateral rectus, the medial rectus, assuming this is where the nose is located. Then we have an inferior rectus and a superior rectus. Then we have two muscles that are oblique. So we have the inferior oblique muscle and you have the superior oblique muscles. So all these play a role in pulling um, the eyeball to different sides. So when we have an imbalance, then you end up having a problem. Then, So you find that all these muscles are attached to the sclera, as you can see. And the movement of these muscles are normally innervated using uh, three main cranial nerves. So cranial nerve number three, four, and six. Okay. So the movements that are necessitated by these um, muscles uh, include they're actually almost like 3D because they are, they can have they can move in the y axis. Okay. They can move in the x axis or they can move as if they are like rotating, which is the Z axis. So they actually has, have uh, three axes. Now, in terms of action, what is the action of extraocular muscles? So we can have the first thing, which is duction. And duction by definition is the movement of one eye. So the movement of one eye is called duction. And this can um, either, we can either have, have uh, an adduction or an abduction, but duction is the movement of one eye. Then we can actually have movement of both eyes in the same direction. This is actually called version. So when um, eyes are moving in the same direction uh, and they're both of them, then that is called version. So this terminology is important because when we we'll be talking about different versions, then we'll understand actually we're talking about movement of both eyes in the same direction. Then we have vergence. So vergence is almost similar to version, but this is movement of both eyes, but in opposite direction. So we can either have divergence of the eye or we can have convergence of the eye. So these eyes are moving in different direction. So like this one is moving uh, to the left, this one is moving to the right, this one is moving to the, uh, the other side. So we can have a divergence or a convergence. We can have versions, okay? We can have duction okay so to understand now the movement we talked about the balance now each movement whether you're talking about a duction a version or a vergence um they are guided by two main laws so we have the herring's law 
and this is to is actually taken the name herrings uh, like how how the herrings which are basically a school of fish move or swim together they're always moving in the same direction together so what herrings law states is that um um that extra ocular muscles they're responsible for each eye's movement and they are innervated equally okay so if if we are talking about a movement, for example, of these muscles or on the side, which are uh, shown with this color. So in right gaze, if they are supposed to move to the right, the right uh, lateral um, rectus. So in this case, this part will be the right lateral rectus. Remember, we're assuming here this is where the nose is. And the left medial rectus. So for this eye, this is their left. This is the... Um, Talk about the left medial uh, rectus. So these ones will actually move together. Okay. So that is what we're talking about, equal innervation. So these two muscles will be innervated in the same level or equal equally, and then they move together such that we can all move to the right gaze. And consequently, the same thing. If you're talking about this uh, rectus and this one, they'll be innervated together to move in the opposite direction. So the other law is the Sherrington's law, which is basically uh, a law of reciprocal innovation. So it's, it simply states that increased innovation of a given extraocular muscle is normally accompanied by a reciprocal decrease in innovation of the antagonist um, muscle. So remember in this eyeball, so if you're talking about like, for example, a left uh, rectus and the right, uh, so okay, medial rectus and, uh, and the lateral rectus, they are antagonistic. Okay, because these two muscles, they cannot all contract at the same time or move in the same direction at the same time. So if this one moves, then this one has to relax. So what we call in the reciprocal innovation. So in a right gaze, for example, in this right eye, the innovation of the right, uh, the right lateral rectus is increased, while at the same time, the, the right medial rectus, this one, is decreased. But this is in the same eye. Okay, so these are the Sherrington's law and Herring's law. So Herring's law normally would apply when you're talking about uh, the two eyes and how they move, and when you talk about the single eye and how the, the one one um, extraocular muscle is innervated, the other one is has decreased innervation. That is Sherrington's law. Very important. So um, of all those movements, we normally have um, nine positions of gaze, what we call the cardinal um, positions of gaze, and basically we have primary. The primary gaze or the primary position is basically um, how you look when you're in a primary position, like when you're just looking straight ahead. So this number one here is what we call a primary gaze. Okay. Um, and that's the first primary cardinal position. Then we have secondary. Now secondary are the basic up, down, right, left. So up, down, left, right, or right, left, whichever. So that is the secondary, the secondary gaze or the secondary positions. Um, then from there, we have now position in combination of um, a horizontal and vertical. So, for example, in this case, a combination of two and four will be three. So these are called tertiary uh, positions. So this will include things like uh, dextro elevation, dextro uh, depression, level elevation, and level depression. So as you can see, we can end up having, um, um, we have four of the primary Okay, four. So sorry, four of the secondary, four of the tertiary, and then one of the primary, which leads us to the nine cases. Okay, so this is what we've talked about. Uh, if you look at the primary position straight ahead, this one, then we have an elevation, then we have a depression. Okay, <clears throat> then we have um, like both eyes moving to the left, what we call just a lie version. Um, remember, we said version is moving in the same direction then that will be on the other side. Okay, then we have <clears throat> movement of both eyes to the right. Okay, this is uh, dextroversion, but we can also have dextroelevation like this one. We can have a uh, level of elevation like this side. So like that. So these are the primary position. Then we have secondary together with actually uh, the tertiary position. Then we have the binocular single vision. Okay, so this basically is a concept that is very important because um, it, the, the fact that you're using two eyes um, to actually perceive one image is actually a very significant thing. 
So binoculars uh, single vision is achieved when both eyes are used together. And um, even though each eye slightly sees dissimilar images arising in each eye because of what they can actually access to see, ultimately they process a single image by process of fusion. So like as you can see, this right eye can see the, the, um, the tail and, the, and the, the part of the mouse. This one can see even the, um, the ears of the of the. Um, of this image, then ultimately they, they fuse together to have a formidable uh, full image formed. So this normally develops during the first six months of life, and then you're able to form a single binocular single vision. So thank you, that's end of part one.